All right, we are live. Welcome, Valbona, to our very first FISBO Friday calling session. So let me just make sure I got a couple things here set up. And we are going to jump into it today. All right, cool. So here's how this is going to work. All right. So I got your um, I got your leads. Okay. So everybody that's watching this live or in the future, what we're doing every Friday moving forward, and the times are going to differ based on obviously where the agent is located. But what we're doing is we're taking one of our students that are in our for sale banner training program. Today we have Val Bona from Tennessee. Welcome. <laughs> and I'm going to be personally calling uh, Valbona's leads in her market in Tennessee. I don't know anything about the market. <laughs> I've never uh, been to your exact city per se. And the reason I'm doing this, uh, just so you know, Valbona and everybody that's watching this, the reason I'm doing this is more so than anything else is to share a mindset, right? If you think about what we're doing here, uh, I have agreed somehow, some way, I don't know why I did this, but uh, I've agreed to call leads in your market, not knowing anything, right? To have a relentless mindset that um, most people, as you know, in this industry have a massive fear, right? Of prospecting yeah. and of calling. <laughs> so, so I'm trying, hopefully I can hopefully help people overcome that fear because I'm calling into markets that I know nothing about. And so that's one thing. The other thing is, hopefully you can have some good key takeaways from today's calling session. Uh, and you can walk away learning something as we talk through the phone calls and how they go. And then uh, other people watching this that will watch this now in the future can also have some key takeaways. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to call, you've got a couple for sale by owner leads that you sent, and then you've got some for rent by owners. So I'm going to be calling actually uh, both of those lead sources for you because I think there was only a couple for sale by owners this morning. Yes. And those were those came from uh, Vulcan 7, correct? Correct. Yeah, very, very cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to call through some stuff. I'm going to just put you on mute um, mm -hmm. and then I can bring you off mute. When I generate uh, an opportunity or a lead or an appointment, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get the prospect's email over this live stream because I don't want to share their email address, right? Uh, with the world, right? I don't think that would be smart. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be calling on your behalf, right? As your ISA or your inside sales agent. And I'm going to reference you as my business partner. And then any opportunity that I generate for you, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have you call them back, right? So I'll talk about you, I'll introduce you to the prospect if we get an opportunity. And instead of actually setting the appointment or getting their email address, I will have you follow up with them this afternoon to take it to the next step. That makes sense? Yes. All right, so let's get started. So I have an app on my phone, which is really cool, uh, that allows me to get a phone number in your local market. So I'll be calling with a local number, which is going to help us, I think. Yeah. All right. So let's jump in. I'm going to go ahead and just put you on mute and I'm going to call through. Again, we've got a couple for sale by owners. If I get them, great. If not, I'm not going to leave a voicemail, right? Because I want you to call them later this morning. If I don't get in touch with them, I want you to actually have the opportunity to, to get in touch with them. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go, calling our first FISBO in Tennessee. Six, six, five. Well, that didn't work. That number is not the right number. So six, six, five, oh, nine. Let's call our next one. Hmm. 
why it's not working. Well, that app's not working. I'm gonna just go call from my regular number now. Now I'm gonna call from a Michigan number. I don't know why that app is not working. I tested it, but that's okay. I don't know why that didn't work either. I don't know what's happening. 767. So what happens when you do things live? That's okay. Hmm. Okay, all three of those numbers did not work. And you did you just copy and paste these from your your system or did you go ahead and unmute yourself real quick? I um, just exported the list from Vulcan 7. Okay. Let me just do a couple more of these. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna call some for rent by owners. I can't believe those two numbers that came through with those for sale by owners, both are not working. So let me try, I'm gonna call some for rent by owners for you. And then what we could possibly do too is um, call some older for sale by owners, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me, let me uh, call these new for rent by owners first and then uh, see what we can do. So anybody that's watching this, if you don't know what a for rent by owner is, it's somebody who has a rental property that we're looking to see if they're potentially considering selling the property either now or in the future. So let's call some of these and see if we can drum up any opportunities. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Adam. Adam, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the property for lease on Briarwick. Is that still available by chance? Yeah, it's still available. Okay. Yeah, I was calling to find out, obviously, the market right now being as high as it is. I was curious if you'd be open to consider maybe selling that property right now versus hanging on to it long term as a rental. What are your thoughts on that right now? Uh, it's a buy and hold for me, for sure. Uh, 100%. I, I just rehabbed it um, with, with that strategy in mind. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, uh, from what I can see, it looks like the property's in really good shape. And so you're going to plan on hanging on to this for a while. Is there a point maybe if the market continues to go up that you would consider cashing in and maybe putting that money in another investment in the future? Or? Um, so the, the owner of the property Depends on what kind of tenant I get in there. If I, I, I have not owned a rental in the in the Bordeaux area before, if it ends up being more trouble than it's worth, um, I'll, I'll offload the property. Yeah, that makes that's a ton. Kind of the only, that's, that's the only deciding factor. So we'll we'll see how it goes. I've already got uh, quite a few people submitting applications. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean we'll we'll see how it goes. It's all it's all kind of new. I'm new to Nashville, so. Yeah, makes sense. Well, I mean, like you said, I mean, the rental market's also hot as, as far as uh, that goes. And so is the resale. What I'll do, are you planning on just doing a, a, a one year lease on this to see how things go? Is this your first rental here in the area? This is your second, you said? That was my first rental in the area. Yeah. Got it. And then you're planning on doing a one year lease to start? Okay. Well, what I'll do, and really I don't mind, uh, maybe I'm going to have my business partner, Valbona, I'm just going to have her shoot you a quick text, send you some information about our team, and then we'll follow up with you maybe in six to nine months to see how that rental's going. And if at that time things are maybe not going well and the market continues to go up, we could potentially talk about a strategy to, to getting it sold for you. Would that be fair? Yeah, I think that's probably a good move on your guys' part. I mean, we'll I'll definitely know six months in if, uh, if, if this is uh, you know, something I'm going to keep holding on to. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's, been, it's been rehab top to bottom. So, like, it, it could sell maybe not top of market, but I, I think we could get a pretty good price for it. It's, it's 
really nice inside. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's the thing, right? I think I think you're spot on. I couldn't agree more. You know, I think in the first first six months, you're going to know, do you like being a landlord? Do you not like being a landlord? And based on the property you have, the market right now, there's nothing good for sale. So yeah, if we were to put your property on the market, it would probably sell with multiple offers. But let's not agree to do anything right now. Uh, I'll have my business partner, Valbona. I'm going to have her follow up with you and uh, see how things are going as you get into this lease. And like I said, if, if things are going great, fine. If they're not, maybe we can talk about a relationship at that time to, to help you get this property sold. Fair enough? Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. You got it, Adam. My pleasure. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Talk to you soon. All right, bye, bye now. Boom. Oh, my God. So what are your thoughts? What did you take away from that call? No, it was the way you were talking. I mean, I talk, uh, I have spoken with foreign by owners uh, a lot, but I never had such a long, nice conversation. They gave me a few of information, but I think maybe it was me not keeping the conversation going. I said, oh, okay, so you are going to do the rental for a while. Okay, fine. And then we go for the text, but it hasn't been so... It looks like you knew Adam for a long time, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think the I think the important thing is, and I'm going to go ahead and call the next one too to keep things going. But I think the important thing is really staying detached from the outcome, so it doesn't sound salesy. It sounds more conversational, so that the prospect doesn't feel threatened, right? Because I'm coming from a place of like, hey, I just want to help you out, and yeah. so they don't feel they can really feel that energy. And if you come across too salesy, that's when they're their guard and their defenses start to uh, to rise. And so you really want to watch that energy that you're giving off and how you're saying what you're saying. So let's call a couple more of these for rent by owners for you. Let's see. But there's a really good lead for you. So after this calling session, any lead or opportunities, we'll make sure that we organize all that for you. Okay. Okay. So everybody that's watching, obviously I'm calling, I'm hand dialing. I'm not calling on a dialer. Hello, this is Laura. Hey, Laura, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the property for lease. Are, are you the owner by chance? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, is that is that property still available by chance? Okay. Yeah. I was trying to find out, I mean, obviously with the market being so hot right now, if, if you might be considering selling that property right now, if you could get a great offer versus hanging on to it as a rental, what are your thoughts on that right now? Uh, that's not really something that we've um, considered. Okay. We kind of bought the property as a rental like three and a half years ago. And that was always our goal to, um, to turn it into a rental. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it seems like a it's a great area, obviously. And so the the rent, the the, the landlord or the tenants have been pretty good in that property for you guys. Uh, well, we haven't rented it out yet. This is going to be our first. We've been living, we've occupied the residency uh, since we purchased it three and a half years ago. So this is going to be our first um, renters. Got it. Got it. Where where are you guys? Uh, where'd you guys move? We are moving to Henderson. Oh, good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. So, so you guys are going to try to try to rent this thing out. And um, if things go well, obviously, and you guys are cash flowing, certainly you're going to hang on to it. But if the market continues to go up and maybe you guys don't love being a landlord at that point, would you guys consider possibly selling cashing in? Um, it is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well let's not agree to anything right now. Um, are you guys looking for a 12 month lease right now? Okay. What I'm going to do, if you're okay with it, I'm going to have my business partner. Her name is Valbona. She's one of our top agents in the, in the, in the city here. I'm going to have her follow up with you in just a few months to see how that rental process is going. And uh, if, if you guys don't like it, maybe we can talk about a relationship and, and what we could possibly do to get the property sold for you guys uh, in the future. Would that be reasonable? Yeah, it makes it completely transparent. 
I love it. I love it. Makes a ton of sense. And I absolutely respect that relationship. I guess when the time comes, you know, if it makes sense, maybe we can set up time to show you kind of what we would do. So you'd have all your options on the table. Ultimately, you guys would make the best decision for, for you and your family. Would that be fair? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's definitely fair. And who did you say you all were with again? Yeah. So we're with United Real Estate. And so what I'm going to have uh, my business partner, her name's Val Bona. I'm going to have her shoot you a text message here this morning, and then she'll send you an email with our resume. So you have all of our information on file. And then, like I said, we'll stay in, we'll stay in touch and uh, see how things are going with the rental. And if there's ever a day where you guys potentially looking at selling it, we'd love to set up time to interview for the job. Fair enough. All right. Yes. Fair enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great morning. I'll talk to you soon. You too. All right. Bye, bye now. There you go, girl. <laughs> this is amazing. This well, is you know, again, just trying to keep the conversations light, easy, conversational. And so, again, this is why I think when I tell you guys in our program, why I love these leads so much is, you know, the absentee owner, which is a for by owner, an active absentee owner. This is why I love these lead sources so much. You know, the competition's very low, motivation's is high. You can build a nice database of these, you know, and there's so many of them. So let's, uh, let's keep going. Do you have any questions for me? Or like why I'm asking the questions I'm asking? No, I mean, the questions you're asking is so good. I like the way you say, I love it. Very, I mean, very stable in your tone of voice. I, I don't feel pressure. I'm not scared to call anymore when I listen to you yeah. because we definitely are offering them something good. We are not, uh, I mean, pushing or anything. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, so that's, that's, I'm hoping you're getting that takeaway, right? We're just keeping it nice and easy. There's no pressure. There's no sales pitch, you know? So let's keep rocking and rolling. Let's call some other ones for you. Um, all right. And obviously they don't all go like this, right? I think that the more calm you can stay, the better opportunity you have to have a good conversation. You hear that? Yeah. So I don't, I don't mess with property managers at all, right? Me neither. Because, yeah. The, the deal is if you call and they have a property manager, they're, they're managing the rent, the, the rental, obviously, they will sell the property a lot of the times too. So they're already doing business with somebody. I just move on. That's like an expired listing who's uh, relisting with the old agent already. I don't even, you can't even mess with those. We are in a relationship right now, so. That's, that's exactly right. So let's go three, nine, nine. I'm gonna call this last one for you. But it's great, we can, we can generate these leads all day. Yeah. Oh, that's another property manager. Hold on, there's one more here. This is, let's see. The biggest thing I would tell you though, as we're doing this and anybody that's watching, this is the power of prospecting. I've been sitting here, we'll be making calls, I don't know, for how long? 15 minutes maybe? Yeah. And we've generated two potential seller leads. We didn't have to pay Zillow for these. We didn't have to do any of that stuff. We had the conversation. We're personally putting them into our database. This is the power of direct outbound prospecting. Nothing can replace this. Brandon. I'm going to call this. They've got a couple numbers here. Okay. I'm going to call the local numbers. reached 
the voicemail box of All right, so let me, let's see, do you have any old for sale by owners that we can try? Um, I do have. And then what I want you to do is um, just send me a message on Facebook. Just send me the person's name, address, and telephone number. So we are talking uh, Fearbos? Uh, for uh, uh, for sale by owners. Let's call some for sale by owners. Yeah. Well, see, you've, you've probably got thousands that you've never talked to before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Give me some of those that you've never even made contact with. The black hole, as we call it. Yes. While she's looking at that, you guys, everybody else out there that's watching, you know, use the comment section. Let me know what questions you guys have about these phone calls. Uh, or what you're struggling with so I can answer these after this calling session, I'd be happy to do that for you guys. And every week, make sure you guys tune in. If you guys are not subscribed to the channel right now, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Every Friday, we're gonna be doing live prospecting sessions like this so you can learn as much as possible so that you can utilize the best opportunity, which is direct prospecting, to go out there in your own market and get listings. Did you find a couple? Yeah, I'll just take some time to, to write those down, but I'll send to you in one by one, so while you talk, I have more, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. And just, just their first name, the phone number, and just, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the street address. I don't need the city or anything like that. No, no, yeah, just the uh, street address. I sent the first one. Got it. All right, very good. Thank you. I will call them now. I'd like to get some for sale by owner conversations going we'll for you. At least one. We want just one. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And so we're calling in central time, right, Valbona? That's where we're at. And so uh, that's another recommendation I make for everybody watching this. Call like 8, 30, 9 o'clock, FISBOs, every lead source. Okay, he did not answer. Did you send me another one? I have a lot of fear, but haven't had a lot of Facebooks recently. Okay. So I'm not finding here. That's okay. So let's let's do this. I'm gonna, um, why don't you give me another for rent by owner if you have one that you haven't talked to? I got another of Facebook. Oh, perfect, perfect. Um, And if we if we've got some time, you can um, if you want, if you're comfortable with it, you can make some calls, and I can give you some live coaching too. Yeah, definitely. We are here to learn. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. We're not attached to the outcome. We're just here to learn. You've got a great attitude and a great mindset. I got to tell you. Yeah. I I got a listing from a Facebook. I was uh, following up with her since. Um, beginning of October. And then she, she called me, I don't even recognize her. She said, hey, here is my name. Can we jump in a Zoom call this afternoon for listing my property? Oh, I said, oh my great. God, <laughs> and I got it, yeah. I send it to you, another one. Got it. All right, so this is a FISBO, right? Yes. Okay. All right, let's call this one. You're lucky, you got some nice price points. So we're calling $800,000, $900,000 uh, listings. I wish we had these in Metro Detroit, you lucky dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, six, one, five.
was the luckiest was the our friend from the the other student i can't remember his name that he got the number of this celebrity listing oh name. yeah that's right that <laughs> that's was funny. amazing yeah So anytime that I call a for sale by owner though, and I don't get them, I always try to text them, right? And that text, remember, is the first name with a question mark. So, so when we're done here, anybody that we don't get on the phone, all you want to do is you want to text whatever their first name is and say, uh, you know, Bob, question mark. And that will provoke a response from the prospect. And then you can say, hey, it's Valbona. I'm a realtor. Had a couple of questions about your property. Are you able to jump on a quick call? Mm -hmm. Right, because we want to use the text message to get them on a phone call. All right, so send me a couple more. All right, and then the other thing too, you guys, if, if you guys do have questions, uh, you can use the comments for sure. Um, or you can just email our support team directly too support at reverse selling.com and we can respond to you via email as well. All right. I'm going to call, I'm going to call one more and then I'm going to have you make some calls and then we'll see what we can get in touch with. Maybe you can call direct from your Vulcan seven system. Okay. Yes. So this other one you just sent me, that's a for sale by owner too, correct? Yes. Everything I sent you is for sale by owner. Perfect. This training has been a life changing. Uh, since we started at the beginning of October, because I was doing only paid leads. Yeah. I was like waiting for them to come to me. And I, the, the reason I started the program was like, what am I doing? So I'm wake, waking up every morning and I'm just hoping if a lead comes. So I was very like, um, not active. Yeah. And uh, when I was searching, and I actually I didn't do a lot of search, but I saw you a few old vid, uh, YouTube videos, and then you were really different there at the time. <laughs> and when I got in the FISBA domination program, I said, oh my God, this guy has progress. So we have a program right now. I saw you in the very few stu students you have from the beginning. I said that that's for me and was was really good. Since I started, I, I, I'm building up my pipeline a lot, but beside that, so I, I got three listings and in, in, we're talking six, uh, six eight weeks, three oh listings. So I, I, I mean, that's my work. That's what I was doing. I'm doing every morning. So that's you got, you got three listings in the last six to eight weeks. Yes. Yeah. I have one land. I have a, a residential to 250 K and the last one I did yesterday is $560,000. It's phenomenal. And you got them all through uh, direct prospecting. You didn't have to buy leads. You have to wait for nothing to come in. No, direct prospecting. And on top of everything, I got a buyer that he saw the sign on the, the residential. I put it there, the, my listing. He called me. He was looking to find out about the listing I had. So he became my client because he did not have an agent. Love it. Four. It, yeah. It's phenomenal. I mean, again, I don't want to keep saying the same thing, but it's just so powerful. You're in control of your destiny. Nobody, that's so, you just gave me goosebumps because I don't like any methodology where you have to wait for something to happen. Like you said, like I want, I want to be in control of my own life, my own income potential, my own time. And direct prospecting is the only thing that gives us the opportunity to do that. All right, let me call this last one and then uh, maybe I'll have you make a couple dials. Okay. Hopefully we can get a contact. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system two seven zero. All right, so I'm going to have you just, uh, you can either get on your dialer or you can hand dial, uh, whatever you're more comfortable with. 
I'd like for you to just call a couple for sale by owners. Let's just stay right with for sale by owners and call some that you haven't contacted yet. I, I, I started with, because I moved my contacts from what every uh, work of every day. So they are messed up a little bit with fear bows or, I mean, yeah. I can tell the first moment that I opened the, um, should I do like a hand dial? Yeah, just yeah. hand dial. Let's just hand dial. Let's do one at a time. I yeah. just want to, I want to really be able to give you some real live coaching as you're making these phone calls uh, right now. Okay. These are, um, I, I tried several times calling these uh, leads. So they are not contacted, not even one time for me. Perfect. So th those are, those are the ones we want to focus on. And are you going to use the 1.0 script or 2.0? Um, I would like to do the 2.0. I already moved from that, so. Perfect. Hi, please do not hang up. Your call has been redirected to Verizon Financial Services, where a minimum. Uh -oh. <laughs> I got <laughs> another number. Yep. Please do not hang up. You're. No, no. Yeah. Um. Another FISBO. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Good to see you guys. I'll go back and answer all these chats and all these questions after this session. I just want to focus on Valbona right now and make sure I pay attention to what she's doing. Please do not hang up. You're oh my God. Yeah, is that the same lead? No, no, it's a, the second one. That's weird that it's going to that system. Is this a four end by no? Yeah, call, call any of them. That's all right, because I've got some time to, whatever lead you have, let's call them. I at least want to get you a couple contacts and some real life coaching. Hi, please do not hang up. Oh, wow. I don't understand why. I don't understand why it's doing that. Never had so many of this. And remember, everyone that's watching, obviously, you want to hear her make a contact. Everyone's cheering for you, about Mona. Hi. Please do not hang up. Weird. This is weird. It's happened, uh, if you so happen to the Facebook, I send it to you and I'm trying to call Facebook. Maybe something happened with the program today because this was not <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, that is super weird. I don't know why every single one is doing that for you. Let's just try a couple more. This is a fear bow. I'm trying to call. Oh, there's not a number here. So I'm going to show I talk to the crowd while you're doing that. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So script 1.0, you guys is a script designed to get you a preview appointment with a for sale by owner script 2.0 is to help you identify a list. Oh, please do not. Yeah, something's going wrong with, with these numbers. It's only with the Facebook, I think. Let me see if I'm, I'm going to go for the fear bus or whatever I have here. Yeah, perfect. But maybe something happened with it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not calling from um, like a Google number. Yeah. I'm doing the regular number now. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, now you're calling from your, your actual, your line. Let's try that. And you know what I'm going to do, you guys, after this session, after we're done? Please do not hang up. 
I'm going to go and answer all your questions right here in real time. So, so let's just talk through this real quick. I don't know why that's doing that. Try another one as we're talking. Yeah. I'm going to go back up. I'm going to answer all your guys' questions as we're trying to make contacts. So let's see. I'll go. I'll just work my way down. So Lisa O'Brien. Um, Brandon, sorry. So it looks like I'm not lucky today with the phone numbers. Something it's on the system or I don't know what's happening. Did you, they want to know, did you pay your phone bill? <laughs> <laughs> I did everything. And this goes, goes from, if the, I get the same thing from uh, Google voice number I have and from my regular number. So weird. All right, let's talk through some takeaways. I want, I want to talk to you and then I'm going to answer all the questions in the chat. So everyone that's out there, stay with me. I'm going to take the next 10, 15 minutes and I'll answer all your guys' questions. So, so when you were hearing me make those phone calls, we talked a little bit, you know, um, what were some of the big things that you're going to try to implement right away starting today and moving forward? Ask me, right? So the, the first thing I really want is to be uh, to have this um, calm mood when I talk. I don't have the anxiety of making calls. I don't even think just the number and I go for it. And um, the other thing, it's all this objection that we talk when we training in our classes. So I know them. I know how to deal with them, but it has to be a little bit more um, how can I say persistent on what I talk and I see the voice the the timber of my voice has to be, I have to to deliver confidence that's right because I, I said uh, I saw this in you today I mean every every training but when this is one-on-one -on -one, right yeah. so I saw the confidence of you and you transmute this confidence to to the other person that you are talking to yeah that's great now, if I could offer some advice, you know, I think the way you have to do that, because certainly, again, I mean, I, there's, I have nerves too, right? People make me, you know, they watch me make these calls and they're like, oh, you know, they give me all this positive feedback, which is great. The thing is, like I've always told you guys inside of our training program, I've been making calls like this for 16 years. I still get nervous and I want everybody out there watching this. It's okay. The nerves are fine. The way that we are able to articulate and to um, to really get our point across and in, in our in our delivery with confidence is we have to slow down the mind. We just have to kind of slow everything down, focus on this one phone call, this one conversation. Really listen to what they're saying, which will set you up to ask great questions. And so, when you can calm your mind down, you're not mumbling as much, you're not talking as fast. You're able to listen more. You're able to articulate better. You're able to show more confidence, right? So if I was to role play with you right now and you were, to, you were a for sale by owner, right? When I, and I call you, right? The first thing I'm going to say is, you know, hey, Valbona? Yes. Who's calling? Hey, this is, this is Brandon. I'm, I'm a realtor and I was calling about the property for sale and I understand you're selling it by owner. Is that right? Yes, correct. Now that, just the energy transference that I talk about, right? Transferring good energy through that, through that conversation. I want to come across different right away, right? And so my tonality, my delivery, my sincerity, my authenticity, I'm working on all those things when I'm trying to talk. That's why people have a tough time putting it in words with like, hey, how do I connect with somebody? How do I connect with the prospect? We have to talk to them the same way we would talk to a friend of ours, right? Or someone that we cared about. And we're trying to convey that message. So let me get through some of these questions that might help you too, okay? Um, all right, so they oh, actually, they wanna see a live role play. They wanna see a live role play. I think that'll be great. So, so let's, I'm a for sale by owner. I want you to use script 2.0. We're going to okay. go through the entire call and then I'll, uh, we'll break that down afterwards. Okay, good. So ring, ring. Hello. Brendan? Yeah, this is Brandon. Hi, this is Valbona. Uh, I am a local agent. I saw your property and I understand that you are selling it on your own. Is that correct? That's correct. Great. So I have a few questions for the property. So is the property vacant or you guys live there? Uh, yeah, we live here. 
Oh, good, good. So what is the time frame you guys have to move out if you sell the property? Um, we're not in a huge rush. Okay, got it, got, got it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a work up with a lot of sellers and buyers and um, I was just curious to know, would you consider working with a, a real estate agent that's gonna bring you fully qualified buyers? Um, yeah, I, I think we'd be open to that, sure. Oh yeah, that's great. So uh, what I wanna do, and I always do with my clients, so I would like to go and preview the property before start working with my buyers so to, to match they request the requirements with the property. So are you open to that? What's that? You want to come and see, take a look at the house? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, do, do you have a buyer now or you're just not yet or what? I have buyers because I work with them. Actually, I have two buyers right now, but they are not quali pre-qualified for the amount your property is uh, listed. So that's why I want to do and see, preview the property and um, just match it with either qualified buyers I have. Okay, got it. It's, how does this sound to you? Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Perfect. So before I come, I would like to send you my contact information, my resume, and also my, uh, my license number and the broker I work with. So can I have your best email address? Yeah, just send it to brandon at gmail.com. Okay, Brandon, that's perfect. So um, what I'm going to do uh, before I let you go, so I have another question to ask you that. Um, before, uh, I mean, the market is really great right now and uh, it's hot and we call it a seller's market. You, you will be able to sell on your own. But I really would like to know that if for some reason this doesn't happen, uh, so you, you won't be able to sell the property in 30 or 60 days. So are you open to work with an agent to help you sell the property? Um, yeah, if we can't sell on our own, I think we'd be open to that. Sure. Okay, perfect. So what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to send you my resume, the contact information, your, the email address you gave it to me. And uh, I also have a backup for sale by owners backup plan. And I would like to walk you through one, while I visit your home. It's going to be a short thing, 10 to 15 minutes. And um, then I'll, I'll come tomorrow and see you at 3 p.m. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. All right. So let me give you some feedback. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. So, so first and foremost, um, I want you to, I think what you should do over the weekend is you should write out the script verbatim in how you actually talk as Valbona talks. Because yeah. what happens is you're searching for Brandon's words right now. I do. <laughs> I know. I know. And, yeah. and so there's, there's a three-step process, right? So I want you to write out the script uh, verbatim. That's step number one. This is in your words, okay? Step number two is memorizing those words because you. the problem right now is you're not able to communicate confidently because you're still searching for what to say in your mind. So, so you got to write it out verbatim. You have to memorize it right? And then you need to be able to, to uh, internalize it, right? Or be able to uh, confidently deliver that script, right? So you're going to write it out and then you're going to memorize every single word, right? Someone in your family or someone you live with, you could just practice, use role play or use um, uh, um, flashcards if you need them. Like you're back in school studying for a test. All right, Valbona, what's line number one? Uh, well, are you open to working with a buyer's agent? Okay, great. What's line number two? So you can just memorize the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Once you've been able to do that, then do you have a role play partner right now? I do not have a role play partner. You need one for yeah. sure. So yeah. I'm going to role play with you right now. And uh, before I do, I got a couple more pieces of feedback. So I want you to do those three things. Write out the script verbatim, word for word, comma, sentence, whatever, uh, exactly the way that you would say it. You're going to take my script, put it in your words. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to memorize it. Then you're going to practice the heck out of that thing. Okay. Yeah. Now, what I want you to not do moving forward is you spent too much time on the buyer, right? Why this whole buyer thing. And I know it's natural to go there. Meaning you spent a lot of time telling me I work with a lot of buyers. They're not qualified yet. I want to look at your house to see if I can match them up with the buyer. When we do that, 
you're setting yourself up with the for sale by owner um, that you have a potential buyer, that you, you Valbona, have a buyer or a potential buyer for my house. This is going to make it very difficult for you to transition into a listing opportunity because they're going to feel like you bait and switch them. They're going to feel like you set them up, right? And so what we want to do uh, is we want to be very intentional with our conversations. So let me role play this back with you and see what you think. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Ring, ring. Um, yes. Hello. Hello, Valbona. Yes. Who's calling? Valbona, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor and I was calling about your property for sale here on Smith Street. Uh, and I understand you're selling that by owner. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, and I absolutely respect that. You know, I was curious, you know, if you're open to the idea of an agent bringing you a buyer, a fully qualified buyer at this time. Oh, yes, we work with agent. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now I'm looking at your property here on Zillow. It looks phenomenal. You know, uh, where are you guys planning on moving when the property does sell? Uh, we are going down in Florida. Oh, that's exciting. What, what part of Florida are you guys heading to? Uh, we're going to Tampa because we have a family there and all that. I love it. I love it. That's exciting. Now, from a timing perspective, you know, how soon would you guys like to be there? We are not in a rush. We're going to take our time. Perfect. Perfect. And so I guess let me ask you this, too. With the market being so hot right now, you know, in, in Nashville, I'm curious, you know, if in a couple months, the property Valbona for some weird off chance reason doesn't sell, would you consider meeting with an agent like myself to look at some other options? Uh, no listing agents. We just want to, if you have any buyer, we can, we can work together, but not listing agents. Yeah, absolutely. And just to be crystal clear, I think you'll absolutely sell the property on your own. I guess I'm curious if in a couple months, whatever strategies you're using aren't working, at some point down the road, would you consider looking at some other options? I mean, if we don't sell for like three, four months, maybe yes. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and again, I don't know if that will be the case for you or not. What I'm going to do is this, and really I don't mind. I'm going to send you an email with my for sale by owner backup plan, Valbona. Take a look at it. I'll stay in touch with you. I'll keep you up to speed with what's happening with the marketplace. And if you get to the point where you'd ever want to meet with me, look at some other options, I'd be happy to do that. Would that be fair? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Cool. What is the best email for you typically? Uh, Valbona at Gmail. Perfect. I'm going to send you an email as soon as we hang up. And now let me ask you this. I mean, um, I kind of understand your position and where you're at. You know, if I could show you this plan right now that would get you the money that you need in your pocket, bottom line, would you consider maybe looking at that plan and interviewing me now versus waiting in the future? And I'm just kind of curious. Um, yeah. I mean, we can do, yeah, yeah. So we can, we can have a look at the plan. Of Let's course. do this. Let's not agree to anything over the phone right now. Why don't we schedule some time? I'll stop by the property. I can do tomorrow morning, Saturday morning or Monday afternoon. I'll walk you through the plan 15, 20, 30 minutes then you can see exactly how the plan works and if it's something that makes sense for you guys. Would that be fair? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, perfect. I've got some time tomorrow at 10 a.m. Are you guys going to be home in the morning? Um, for us, it works much better in the afternoon. Okay, good. I can do, you want to do Monday afternoon, like three, four o'clock, something like that? Yeah, three o'clock, yeah. three p.m. It's fine, yeah. Perfect. I'm going to tentatively get you in my calendar for three o'clock. I'm going to send you an email with exactly how the plan's going to work. Okay. I'm also going to send you an email that's going to have a link to what's happening in the marketplace. And then we'll be together for about 30 minutes. I'll walk you through exactly how it all works. And then you can decide if working together with me makes any sense. Okay. Fair enough. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank no you. problem. So that is script 2.0. Tell me what you heard, what your thoughts are. The, the one thing that I, I uh, realized was that when I asked her that, do you have a buyer? So you kind of skip that in a very, uh, how can I say, a very nice way. I did not get offended that you are not replying to my question, but you brought me back to the same topic that you want to talk about, like being open in the future. That's right. About now. Yeah, that's, uh, I realize that. 
And, and remember how we do that, right? It's the A A R A. Yeah, yeah. We stay very agreeable. We affirm. We respond, and we ask another question. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we keep that conversation moving forward. Now, now the first thing I said when we talked about buyers is I said, "Are you open to the idea?" of an agent, not me, of an agent bringing you a buyer. I'm asking them, are they open to that strategy? Because if a for sale by owner is already willing to pay 3% to a buyer's agent, I'm halfway there. I know this is a great opportunity for myself. Okay. Then I get further down the script and how you are going to, um, you, you really are looking for these people to open up about the future. We wanna solidify where they're at today, right? Yeah. What you're doing makes sense. I want you to continue doing that, right? You uh, Chances are you will sell this house on your own. I'm curious, and then you know that question. If in the future you're not able to do so, then at that point, would you consider to look at other options? If they say yes, that's what we're looking for. That is a seller lead, okay? If they say no and they're nasty or rude, that's okay. That We'll go to the next one. Of course. When they say yes, when they say yes, you're going to say, okay, great. And this is where you're going to be assertive. What I'm going to do when we hang up is I'm going to send you an email. It's going to outline my for sale by owner backup plan. Take a look at it. And if then in the next couple of weeks, you want to talk about it with me, I'd be open to doing that. Fair enough. Now, what's happened? I really have taken control and I've position that in a way that when it comes off, you say, yeah, that's pretty reasonable, right? I'm going to give you this information. You look at it. If you want to talk about it, we can do that. Okay. Now I get you to agree to that. I get your email address. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I, you heard me ask for the appointment. Now I just set yeah. the listing appointment and how I did that was, you know, so I'll send you the plan, take a look at it. Let me ask you this, you know, if I could show you this plan now, and help you get the money that you need out of the property and help you get to Florida, would you consider scheduling time with me to look at the plan now versus waiting in the future? That's what that's the question. That's being super intentional. If they say yes, you just set yourself a listing appointment. If they say no, at least you're intentional. Now, as you're making your Monday follow-up phone calls, they're much more intentional. They're not Valbona, the buyer's agent. This is Valbona that wants to talk about a backup strategy. Right? Makes sense? A lot of sense. And I'm saying this for everybody one, I mean, to, to, to listen to that. So I also clarified uh, something when, when we did went through the role player. So we, we made this transition from just previewing to having yeah. listing appointment. This to me wasn't really clear how I'm going to do, because we can get previews a lot, like right. my friends, my other classmates and the students there. But doing this transition takes a lot of guts to do it, to That's ask right. for what we are doing, what we want. That's right. We realize too. Yeah. It's a conscious decision that I'm going to go 2.0. Okay, I'm going to use 2.0 and I'm going to ask for what I want. Yeah. And I think when we, when we mustered up the courage to ask for what we want, people you're going to find are a, a lot more receptive to that than I think that we give credit for. It's when we are not intentional, when we beat around the bush is when prospects get annoyed. It's yeah. when they get upset. But if we're very intentional... And we're not being uh, we're not being pushy. We're literally asking them questions in a way that's very, very, um, very, very from a curiosity standpoint. So they're not threatened, and they really appreciate that uh, authenticity, right? Because I'm being very open with them; they're being very open with me. That's what causes the human connection, right? So that's where they come across, and they're very appreciative. The other thing, I mean, based on my experience, so I, I have been in few previews that because, you know, everybody has the, we have our own values and the preview, I mean, the previews that I agreed with the fees bill that I didn't mention anything about the backup plan. Yes. Yeah. So I tell you when I was in those appointments or previews, so I did not even, I had everything, my folder was ready. I just took out the backup plan because I, I couldn't, I never told them about the uh, backup right. plan. So how am I going there? They are so nice. They are showing your home. And then I come with my intention. Hey, I'm here to list your home. Right. So I said, okay, 
I was saying, you can do that. So you have to, I start working on getting to 2.0 script. So at least intentionally telling them something. So not going there and being by surprise, you know? Yeah. Because, well, yeah, go ahead. Well, here's the other thing is you can still set preview appointments based on script 2.0. It's not just the listing appointment. Yeah. You can still get a preview and here's what that sounds like. So, so if I say, would you consider meeting with me now talking about the plan and you say no, I say, yeah, no worries. I get it. You're going to want to try to sell this property on your own for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. I guess what I'd like to do at this point is stop by, take a quick look at the property and give you some feedback. I'll, I'll see what I can do to, to help you out. And then when I'm there, I'll quickly go through the plan. You can have a copy of it and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Does that sound fair? And I can yes. set in a preview appointment under that circumstance so that when I get there, at least they know uh, that I'm going to go through the plan quickly, <clears throat> but I'm not going to try to list their property, right? Yeah. And I can be very intentional with that. Listen, what I like to do is stop by. I'm not going to try to even talk about getting your property on the market. I'll give you some feedback when I'm there. I'll quickly go through my for sale by owner plan so you can at least see how it works. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, cause that's your next best thing. If you can't get that listing appointment is setting a preview appointment based on discussing the backup plan. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. This is really great, uh, Brandon. I appreciate it. I love no it. I'm sure my every student is going <laughs> to take advantage of this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. So I'm, I'm glad that you did this. Uh, this is exciting. I'm going to answer these guys' questions. I'm going to, uh, you can hop off of here so you don't have to, to wait around. You can go watch the replay or yeah. you can hang out. It's totally up to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. That's will stay here. Though. Yeah. Cool. So, all right, let me answer some of you guys' questions. So uh, Nick says, if, if they say uh, yes, won't you have to list higher than they currently have for sale? All right, so Nick is asking a question about how can you get them uh, the money that they need uh, when they're selling for sale by owner? This is something that we talk about in our program all the time. This is the thing we have to realize, you guys, is that we're talking about uh, the for sale by owner is asking X price. We're not saying or suggesting that we're gonna list the house for more or less. What we're talking about is the likelihood that they get that price versus us get that price. Here's the question. What is it, what, is it more likely that a for sale by owner, let's just say we're trying to get 300,000. Who's more likely to get 300,000? The for sale by owner or a realtor? That's what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna to go to the appointment, Nick, and I'm gonna present the facts. I'm gonna go through the numbers of what it looks like. And I'm literally just gonna show them the actual numbers. And you'll be surprised when you go through that, the for sale buyer says, yeah, that all kind of makes sense. That will work for us. So that's what we're doing. We're not going in overpricing listings to justify our commission. Listen, commissions don't have anything to do with property values. So, so get that out of our mind, okay? Um, Darren. You still schedule the preview always. That's the main goal is just to get face to face. Yeah, I mean, the absolute goal is to, depending on where you're at in your business, you, you absolutely wanna try to get that face to face appointment, but you wanna be intentional, right? So script 1.0 is really just designed to get you in the door, right? Just get in the door, get you to meet them. Eventually, like Valbona was just saying, you can set those so easy. Eventually, you're going to want to get a little bit more intentional. Uh, Louis says, Louis says, what do you say when the FISBO says, if it doesn't sell, I'll just put it on the MLS uh, for three months for 145 bucks? Well, well, just like any other objection, right? We teach our students never take the bait. So I'm going to say, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Naturally, you know, that'd be a good next step. You know, I'm just curious if you got to that point of looking to do that, you know, would you at least consider looking at some other options or looking at my plan before ultimately making a decision? Because here's what we know, Mr. For Sale by Owner, having more, all your options on the table is better than just one option. Would you agree? So we use neurolinguistics and we use, uh, we use uh, patterns of communication that it's almost impossible to disagree with, right? So all we're trying to do is get that presentation or get that appointment. What you don't want to do, Lewis, is take the bait and try to sell them on why they shouldn't do that or any of that. Because remember, the phone call is only designed to get an appointment. It's not designed to get the listing over the phone. 
So when they give you that objection, uh, Lewis, you do not take the bait and try to overcome it. Um, Brendan, can I add something? Absolutely. Uh, I had the fees I listed yesterday was one of those fees bills that told me that for a flat fee, I can go on myself on the MLS. And yep. I said, yes, sure, you can do that. But I added because some of uh, the students, so they, they mentioned in our group, and I said that, of course, you can do that. But let me tell you this, that uh, all the investors, you will get, get hit by the investors because they know that you want to sell so badly and you are there without an agent because they can put the property, but they don't have an agent. So yeah. you're not protected. And she came back to me, I think after three, four days, and she said, Valbona, you were right. And she listed with me yesterday afternoon. That's so phenomenal. It's exactly what you said. So we have to agree and let them go through the pain. That's I right. I heard in her voice. So she was on pain. So she was tried and tired from the phone calls. And then I jump in and I help her. I take, I took over everything. So phone calls and the work. We That's do. exactly right. And so what Valbona is saying, you guys, is exactly right. If someone's going to go down that MLS uh, entry only listing, that's fine. You know, all we're going to do is exactly what she just said. She stayed agreeable. And all she's going to do with her response to that objection is pose um, things for the seller to think about, right? So she talked about the investor thing. What I talk about, which is what all of you should take away from this video, is I talk about the list price to sold price ratio. That's what I talk about. So I say, Valbona, that's great. I mean, I understand, you know, uh, getting it on the MLS maybe. Uh, may be a good next step. I just want you to kind of think about this one thing. And that is, you know, what we see in the marketplace, when a house is listed with a professional real estate agent, the list to sold price ratio is almost the full price. Meaning when it's listed with an agent, you get what you ask for. Well, with the MLS flat fee entry onlys, we're seeing sometimes in the 80% range, meaning you're giving up 10, 20% of your equity to save possibly a 6% commission. So before you get to that point of making that decision, I guess my thoughts are is, would you at least be open to meeting with me, looking at what I can do to help you get the property sold and net the most money before you make that ultimate decision? Would that be fair? And a lot of people think that that's reasonable because they want more options. So David Guzman, what's up, man? Good to see you on here. He says, uh, uh, Let's see. Do you recommend having all the printed materials and presentations with me when I go to the preview, uh, preview the FISBO's home? Absolutely. You want all of, all of the materials we give you guys inside of our training program? You want to have all those dialed in. It's week two of the program, so you absolutely want to have all of those. Uh, let me get through a couple more questions, Valbona. I'm going to let you have... Okay, uh, you're, you're morning back. Lisa says, why do you recommend calling in the morning? I'll tell you why. The best time to the actual, so if anybody out there is an analytical, the best time to call technically is in the evening. It's between 5 and 7 p.m. That's when the pickup rates are the highest, all of that. Now, the problem is we're all humans. And what we know about humans is in the morning is when our willpower is at the highest. It's when our focus is at the highest. So what we have to do to win big in prospecting is we have to build a consistent habit. And the question always becomes, right? I always ask this, is it more likely for you to do the hardest things in your life in the morning or the evening? And every human's the same. It's in the morning. Are you more likely to work out in the morning, right? When you're fresh and you're, you're motivated or in the evening, there's too much risk to wait the whole day. There's too much pain for the whole day and you get to the end of the day and you're exhausted, you say, oh, I can't prospect. I'll just do it tomorrow. It's too risky. You cannot be consistent enough. So what we want, what we recommend is an agent, Eat That Frog. It's a great book. All of you guys should get it. What that book talks about is doing the hardest things in your business and in your life first thing in the morning. And there's all the science to back it up so that you could be consistent. So if we can get an agent to spend an hour or two on the phone in the morning, they can build that consistent habit. Now, I also recommend that every agent has one late night prospecting session per week. On a Wednesday, right, hump day, Wednesday, a five to seven or a six to eight call session once a week, okay, uh, one late night week or one, night, one late night session per week. 
I also recommend that as you're building your business and you don't have a lot of listings, that you do two Saturdays per month, okay? Uh, like a nine, to tw uh, a nine to 11, two one hour call blocks, two Saturdays a month. That would be my recommendation. Um, let me see. And I know there's a lot of questions in here for you guys. Um, and and I'll, I'm gonna answer a couple more. I've got a couple more minutes. So how do you get FISBO phone numbers without paying? That's the unfortunate part, right? So that's what just happened. Zillow stopped providing FISBO phone numbers for free. So you're gonna have to go with a Vulcan 7 or a My Plus Leads or something like that to get your for sale by owner data. You can't get for sale by owner data for free any longer. Um, all right, so here's a good one. So Reed says, what happens if you fill up your appointment slots with previews for the day and even the next day? Do you continue to prospect 100%? The best time to prospect is when you have a full pipeline, when you have a lot of listings. Now, Valbona, let me ask you your opinion. Why do you think I recommend what I just said? Why do you think I want an agent to prospect even more when they have a full schedule and a full pipeline? Um, that's, a, <clears throat> that's a good question. <laughs> so, so yeah, what do you think? Just give me your thoughts. I do believe, yeah, I do believe that we do not need this interruption, even though that we got a lot of listing, we don't want to get out of this habit. And uh, we also, so we want to feed our pipeline because what we have there, so it's going to feed us in the future, but it's not, it's not hundred percent. So we lose some on the way and during the time. So just keeping up and feeding our pipeline. I mean, that's are my, my two yeah. reasons. <laughs> so, so certainly that's a huge part of it. The other part of it is you ever think you ever you ever uh, been in a situation where you have a, 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 an abundance of opportunity in your life. When that happens, you can be a little bit more strategic, a little bit more picky. It helps you uh, detach from the outcome. This is what I want everyone to think about. If you had 15 active listings. You had 10 houses under contract for $100,000 in commissions. You had six listing appointments this week. Now, when you're prospecting, you can set really nice qualified appointments because you don't care. You're not attached to the outcome at all because you have so much going on. Now your confidence is increased, right? So when you have a full schedule, what I want people to do is start to replace bad appointments with better ones. Because you already have the certainty that you've got a full schedule of preview appointments and listing appointments. Now, as you're prospecting today, you're searching for higher quality because your attachment gets less and less and less to it's almost nothing. Now you're making, you're, you're, you're building courage when before you didn't have any courage, right? You've got more courage to ask for the listing appointment now because you don't care. You got a whole week of appointments. That's the reason why. Yeah, that was the transition when I got the first listing. So my confidence boosted a little bit. I said, oh, I can do that. That's so, right. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So cool. All right, I think I got through most of the questions. So make sure you guys join us uh, every single Friday. It'll, it's going to be different times because I've got we've got students on the West Coast, East Coast, in the middle of the country. But I will notify you guys if you guys subscribe and hit that notification bell we'll notify you guys what time Fridays we'll be doing these live calling sessions with our students. So Valbona, this is a lot of fun. Hopefully you got a lot of value from today's session. Uh, I will see you inside of our program, but you have a great weekend, okay? Great job today. Thank you so much, Brendan. Thank you. Yes. Oh, and then, and then you wanna make sure that you get those leads, right? So we can hop on a call. Yeah, yeah. Or, or do you know the ones I, I made contact with? Well, they're the first two ones I have, the Adam and the other lady. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So follow up with them, send them a text, say, hey, you talked to my partner, Brandon. I just want to grab your email real quick. Send them your resume, put them in your follow-up, right? So I would follow up with both of those in about four to five months. Okay, perfect. 